Hey guys, how's it going, Russian? Welcome back. If you are watching the same day, welcome to the dual upload. Uh, you know, I've been having no such luck in chipping away at the stockpile of content that we have for casting conflict. So, I decided to kind of treat you guys with a dual upload today just to kind of see how that can, uh, you know, make some progress on the stockpile. So, I hope you guys do not mind that dual upload. But, uh, of course, we've got Tweaken back in the hot seat for this one. So, let's go ahead, jump right into the gameplay and see how he does in this next series. Alright, and welcome back, folks, to another round of Casting Conflicts. This time we've got Tweakin taking on Unhelpful Yoda. Uh, looks like Tweakin's bought out the yellow-purple against Yoda's green-blue. And how are you feeling about this matchup, Slash? I'm really excited to see what Tweakin brings, because I saw Harmonic Balance in there, and that's a, in my opinion, an underrated card, but a very difficult card to utilize fully. Right. So, we see a very good gold query coming out here from Tweakin. We're going to have at least... um. Nope. Oh, There's at least the first two <laughs> turns are going to be very valuable for him. Now, uh, I rem if I remember correctly, Slash, you weren't here for um, Tweakin's debut match, so uh, you might be unfamiliar with what he brings to the Casting Conflicts table. Um, well, I don't know what specifics he's going to bring out, I can assure you it's going to be quite interesting to see how Yoda adapts to Tweakin's playstyle and his different decks, um, which are... I think in the best words to describe it, unnatural. Not in a bad way, but um, very off of the uh, the norm here. And like you said, harmonic balance is going to be a big indicator of that. Uh, I dislike him playing Lumberjack there. Salahar Rider is just a better option. Even then, because he can pull... Next turn, he could just pull out double Lumberjack here. And then just block, and he's just not in a worse position then. Right, okay. The positioning is identical. Well, we'll see if he Even goes with aggressively the with, with the Jack and Ryder. Which doesn't look like he's going to. He's going to position the Ryder in the same spot as that previous Lumberjack. I mean, it's not the worst position in the world, though, I think. No, oh, that's that's the correct positioning. Because if he has another Lumberjack in there, then he's just trading off that two damage free. Right. So we're going to see the Ryder and Salahar Ryder both move in as a result of Yoda playing the Hobble. So taking a chance to be a little aggressive here. And we're seeing a couple of interesting cards pop up in Tweakin's hand. Katana, Pegacorn. Any thoughts on what he could do with those? I don't know. I believe the interaction with uh, Pegacorn and Harmonic Balance is still standard. Um, other than Pegacorn, everything here to me seems pretty kosher. Um, right. It just seems like a slightly better deck um i mean i i used to run a deck very similar to this um if if this is a knight's deck but i saw harmonic balance so that that's a huge difference definitely harmonic balance could be a big factor um now sort of a point on harmonic balance the last time tweaking was in a conflict I'm not sure if it was the last one or the one before considering by now he's had two matches um in one day but um regardless uh he did run the harmonic balance flamestorm combination inside purple red so he's no stranger to using harmonic balance but i'm kind of curious to see what he's going to do with it uh in the uh yellow purple variant i'm not sure what direction he plans to take that in but for now, I'm just going to sit back, looks like, uh, get some draw with books as a response to Yoda's Matty. Uh, pretty standard-ish. And then we're going to see the Ajira follow-up. Now, we actually haven't talked about Yoda's deck as much. How are you feeling on Yoda's green-blue right now? Right now, it just looks like a standard initiative deck with a uh, spam potential. Um... I'm wondering right now if he is seeing the monsters that could indicate a reanimate, that could indicate um, it being an actual monsters deck, which Yoda is very, very partial to. Um, I, I The biggest threat, I think, right now for Tweakin is there's a possibility of First Temple of the Five Gods being in Yoda's hand, and then also something like if he if he's sitting on Triple Kraken in there, and they all are about to be cost six, and then he gets off another Nalakir, it's it's just game over, because then all three Krakens hit face. Right, right. And that's 15 damage alone right there, considering each Kraken is buffed up. Potentially more, because we don't know what Yoda's hand is looking like. Obviously, I could imagine a couple of buffs being in their Lightning Blade Armory, something along those lines here. But we're going to see Yoda take the more offensive approach now, going in, uh, killing off a couple... I don't... 
what was down there? I missed it. No, uh, barbarian. Barbarian. So Rat and Kaiser, of course, trade into uh, that barb, taking it out completely. And he's looking like he's setting up a bit of a board here. I mean, I'm expecting potentially some kind of push or pull to drag some things a little closer. The way he's kind of positioning them right now. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. If Tweaken runs Luminarius, but if he doesn't, I see this being an extremely difficult cleanup uh, without Luminarius or Swordsman. Right. Something that, you know, is going to be able to hit a lot of units here, which is essentially what Tweaken wants to put down. Um, meanwhile, Yoda, I think, is in a pretty comfortable position here. I don't see him freaking out too much. Looks like he's going to maybe take away that Paladin Resolve. I'm not sure. I wouldn't recommend it, but... Okay, only does, so he's going to probably have some kind of block then to ensure that uh, he will survive? Or is he going to look like maybe sacrificing the Wind Mage here? Uh, it's a sacrifice. I, I prefer... I'm not sure how I feel about that play, actually. Right. I think it's a good play simply because it's um, slowing down positioning for Luminaris and popping it. But at the same time... You're just giving up your advantage so that way he doesn't have to play Luminara. Right. You're kind of trying to prolong what could be a very big play from Tweaken here. But we're going to see Frog Prince come out from Tweaken. Uh, he heals up that Paladin thanks to the initiative that he has. I mean, Frog Prince I don't think many people use for the initiative. But I guess it's a nice little bonus to have, especially when you're running things like Paladin and other Knights. Uh, another aspect of what makes Frog Prince scarier here. Yoda responds Will this be the death combo? Okay. Parrot Rush, will we see a Mystic Journey on this? Yeah, we will. Looks like a whole lot of parrots on Yoda's side of the board here, and it's that's going to be tricky for Tweaking to clean up. Again, we he definitely needs this Luminaris here. Uh, Yoda's smartly using that Serpent Witch to stun the Frog Prince. See, I don't think he's going to be able to kill it this turn, um, but we'll see if he maybe takes away the Resolve to make it easier for him in the next turn, or if he's just going to keep it like that. Tweaking, I think, definitely leads a Luminaris here. It would be big for him to just pop it right there. Um... I just hope that he draws it, potentially, or else this could be a swift end to the game. I dislike how forward um, Yoda pushed his second line of parrots. If they were one line back, it would have been much easier to um, survive against uh, a Luminaris. But if, the, if there was that Luminaris potential, that could just wipe his board. Right, and we see now that he doesn't really have it as indicated by the, um, you know, Behemoth are taking things out, and of course we ended up starting seeing the draw. Uh, but he's going to do some cleanup here and attempts to kind of slow things down. Pegacorn Monk coming out, cleaning up some parrots, a little bit of a manfish play there, uh, wiping out a couple of those additional rats. But there comes the Lightning Blade from one of those parrots, going to do a lot of work cleaning up um, a bit of Tweaken's defense here. And again, more parrots are going to be able to freely swarm in. And on top of that, uh, Tweaken does lose Luminar's potential. He does no longer has a knight on board and none in his hand to play. So I would think this one, especially now that Ragnar's showing up, is going to be pretty cleaned up. Any thoughts on how Tweaken can get out of this one? Slash. He does have double hands. And nothing else running for him. Pretty much. Uh... I mean, e even if you throw a hands... Ragnar is going to be a big chain, and, you know, with Yoda still having the potential for things like Temple in hand, maybe additional buffs, it's it's not looking too good. If he had one more damage, he would have cleaned up that Ragnar. Um, I think he has to... What? He can put the Pegacorn closer to face, because, of course, it's not going to be affected by the chain, but looks like he's going to sacrifice it in terms of getting rid of that stronger parrot, which is, you know, a step that he could take. Can't throw out Craxus, because that thing is too expensive. Uh, he could throw out the second Pegacorn, though. That can, of course, do some work here. He doesn't... Um, I don't know if he knows that he can not be affected by that chain, but looking to play, I guess, around the chain still, uh, which is completely fine here. We're going to see some more parrot action now as they chip the castle away. Uh, or let Big Boy Ragnar do his thing, too. I assume, although, eh, probably going to expect to see, oh, no, he's getting spawn blocked. No, wait, well, you could have spawn blocked him. I guess he wants to keep it friendly, I guess. 
Let's be honest, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't, but, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to make light of a rough situation. There, for theoretically, we, he could still hit an OTK here. <laughs> That's true. It, with multi-strike, multi -strike, in hand. yes. Um, did that heal anything? It the, uh, healed the Pegacorn, no? It did, yeah, you're right. By one. Wasn't what he was looking for, but, you know, getting some kind of heal. And I'm surprised that Yoda hasn't really cleaned this up yet with the uh, with the global buffs. I mean, Temple, Blacksmith, anything could have probably ended this game earlier. Oof, and there is the complete block. Even if he had the proper tools, it's, it's long over. Oh, boy. Yep. Well, of if course, I were to say Primo. where he lost that, it would probably be the fact that he could not clean up Rat Hovel. Really? I think that was the sort of game-ending factor for him. I think that Yoda got way too much value out of that Rat Hovel and then continued to just get board control that Tweakin could never take back because he never had the AoE to, to trade efficiently. All right, well, with that being said, let's go ahead and go back to both of our players here and what they think after a interesting Game 1. All right, gentlemen, a strong Game 1 to start us off here going in Yoda's favor. Congrats to Yoda for that win. Now, we'll, we'll start with you here, uh, something that we just kind of want to ask. Uh, Slasher did mention as the match was uh, closing out here that uh, he, he believed the Rat Hobbles were a strong reason as to why you won that match, Yoda. But, do you mean, do you feel the same way, or do you feel like there was a different reason for your win there? No, I agree. The original, the original Hobble... Uh, kind of, kind of gave me uh, that board presence. That that just, it was just a little hard for him to really take initiative in any direction with just rats everywhere. And, you know, especially for a purple yellow deck, it's, that would yeah, seem that's problematic. Exactly, that's exactly what I was about to say. Purple yellow probably only uses reclaim to to answer. Uh, those types of scenarios, but with a rat hobble only costing two reclaim costs and four, you're still pretty much going to get some kind of value out of it. Right, right. And uh, I guess another <laughs> point that I had, uh, at least before we move on to tweak inside here, Ragnar made an appearance uh, twice. Uh, any comments on his inclusion in this one? Uh, Dread Pirate. It's uh, it's really, it's really all about that combo. Uh, that was the reason I, I actually gave up the win mage. Um, I, I needed something to get the treasure off of Dread Pirate. Gotcha. So I was thinking of of putting, just like putting some rats up, pushing a couple rats up, and seeing if he take the bait on the rats, but he might not have because they. Not doing a whole lot of damage, could have just blocked them or something. But I knew he would, you know, you can't pass up a range, you know, free. True. So, uh, that was just going to give me that that extra, uh, that treasure so that I can miss the journey to Paris. And then, of course, with so much treasure, Ragnar, you know, only costing, you know, you got all the extra treasure. You can probably maybe even scope them or something like that when you go out. He's not that. He's not so bad, um, you know. In a lot of treasure deck. Hmm, fair point. Fair point. Uh, but now going on to the other side of things, tweaking, uh, bringing back a uh, purple yellow. Not the first time we've seen that from you. Uh, how was this one different anyway from the original that you played in the last match or the one before? I honestly can't remember which one. Yes, this day. one was different. This one, I was banking on the fact that he played the no interaction deck the past two conflicts. So I made this deck around him playing that. So as soon as he decided to play blue green i knew i was i lost the match this deck just doesn't have enough attack power to fight on its own it's mainly built around high health units and deflect units so that it would take multiple spells to remove 
move a single unit, it would quickly dispose of his hand before he could get any value for Dragon's Fire or Flamestorm. Right, so that's probably why so, some things like Monk and Pegacorn. Yeah, so there's a lot of healing, a lot of deflect, a lot of high health units, but not a lot of attack power. So as soon as he didn't pick the last Will No Interaction deck, I knew I was in trouble. I knew there was no way I could beat a, uh, a blue-green deck unless I could somehow manage to get a multi-strike uh, Shadow of Katana play, which I had two of the cards, but I just couldn't get any unit close enough where I could use it. And the longer I waited, the more... Rats came out, and I just couldn't, like you said, yeah, the rats were a big problem. Right. Uh, so that's pretty much, I think, all that I'm going to put down. Slash, any comment from you before I move on to match number two? Out of curiosity, Yoda, do you run sheep in that deck? Uh, no, I do not. Oh. Uh, no, I do not. With uh, The parrots kind of took sheep spot, you know. Yeah, uh, you don't want them. You probably only want two copies, and if you get it, you're happy, but you're not really banking on it. Kind of look at them three costs, you know. It's just no, nope, no sheep. I was hoping but, for a uh, Ragnar sheep play there. But... Uh, I believe I do have <laughs> both in the deck, though, so that still gives me the range. I think you need range with uh with pirates. Because they don't hit hard enough, you actually really do need to be able to make a couple unexpected trades along the way. Right. All right. Completely so, agree with that. So, with that being said, I think we now can move into match number two. You guys just about set? Yeah, just a quick question. If I win, theoretically, if I win this matchup, do I have to play with the same deck that I won with, or could I choose any deck? You have to play with your deck that you just lost with. The purple, yo, yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. But we'll see if the game we'll three happens. <laughs> we'll see if the game three happens. Let's go ahead and take you guys into match number three right now. <laughs> All right, folks, match number two underway now. Tweaking responding to Yoda's green-blue with the blue-purple. Now, personally, I know what this deck is all about, um, but I want to give my cohort, my co-host the chance to uh, examine this, see what tweaking has got up his sleeve. It's a smaller people deck. Oh. I, I don't think it's going to work out that well because oh. <laughs> I think it will be I think the issue is that it cannot trade as efficiently as I mean I'm not seeing the lightning in here that I'd need to see for it to trade well against uh, Mystic Journey Green right? Wh which in essence is what Yoda is running here well we'll see Yoda start things off with the um, or at least start his turn three with the Maddie brings out a headwood. Going to be a bit problematic for Tweaking to deal with, but um, I'll give you a quick spoiler. The Grudge Bear is actually the center of what this deck is around. Um, and fair play to Tweaking, he beat me earlier today with this, mainly because I saw the combo too late. Essentially, focuses on Grudge Bear and utilizing the Thunderstrike for some big value, uh, you know, big smack on Castle, if you will. So I'm curious to see if he's going to try and get that off in this matchup. Uh, we'll see Yoda respond to the War Elephant with an Armory that will quickly be dealt with, though, um, by going face. Uh, quite surprised, but I mean, like, Tweakin already has Yoda down to 9 HP. Any thoughts on that? Um, if he gets cleaned up here, I think he might have... Yeah, I think he's going to start having issues coming back into the game. But, especially because that, that just... Yep, there's the Mystic oh, Journey. Oh, there's the Journey. And... Uh-oh. I don't want to call the game too soon because anything could happen, especially with blue in your deck. But it's just going to be so hard to effectively go against this because I bet you, if anything, the fact that Yoda did that... Um, and kept his king alive, I bet he has another Mystic Journey in hand. You think he should have, like, a small fall? I mean, even if he... He's... He can theoretically get to the king, but the thing was, he can't even kill the king. The guards are not going to be enough. Yeah. 
So I think yeah. he might try and set. I mean, the Grudge Bear is something that could possibly deal with it, considering you have the Thunderstrike element to it. It just gets traded, though. Perhaps, perhaps it does. Uh, but I mean, it's it's better than just you know going for what I imagine is going to be a quick spawn block game, because essentially what Yoda could do here, if he really wants to, pop a second Mystic Journey onto that king, and uh, completely spawn block. Um, tweaking out of playing any additional units so that's that's the scary part i think it, that's going to come up in my mind if he has mystic journey it doesn't so we'll see it passed back to yoda here going for the grudge bear play in anticipation for a possible journey we're going to see a blacksmith so no mystic journey looks like at least not now I'm surprised Yoda traded it the way he did then against the first dwarf because he could have traded. He's yeah, he's keeping the king alive. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're gonna see? Ugh. He didn't need what that another just... grudge bearer. <laughs> well, in fairness, he didn't need that armory to be kept alive uh, in order to make some better plays. We'll see this go around. I don't like it. I didn't like that. I do like the fact that he put his armory towards the bottom, though, instead of behind his castle. Stops chain. Mystic journey. And there's journey. Yep. Ugh. Does stop chain, but it's not going to stop a whole lot of these rats from coming in and doing their job. And Tweegan got no answers in hand for it, it looks like. Chipping away with a lot of the rats here. Places a hovel down, just for good measure. And Tweegan's no, got no options. Can't even throw the Mordok out. Not enough gold. Gonna throw the Grudge you know, Bear, and that is gonna be a quick game, too. That 9 health is looking pretty good right now to tweaking. Yeah, it really is. I mean, he, he was nearly there, but, I mean, the Rat King missed the journey, especially when he couldn't get his units to kill off the king. It leads to a quick defeat for him in game two, but, uh... I, I knew what he wanted, I knew what he wanted, but he, In uh, the words of one of my favorite players, fucking rats. <laughs> That was a banana, by the way, for all of you who don't know. Uh, well, with banana's kind words in mind, let's go ahead and jump to both players and see what they think after a very quick game two. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was match three. We're back here with the players. Uh, Tweaking, you had such a good early game. Oh, I know. I was hoping I could keep the pressure on because I didn't want to deal with the Mystic Journey. But as soon as I saw the Rat King come out with the Armory... I knew that there was a Mystic Journey in his hand somewhere, and I wanted to, I think where, what really cost me the match, I forget which turn it was, maybe turn four or turn five, where I had a chance to either play uh, the Hassan City Guards and clear out the two rats, or play the Grudge, the Grudge Dwarf. And my thinking was, if I could play the, uh, the Grudge Dwarf, maybe I could maybe kind of scare him from using the Mystic Journey because he has the th Thunderstrike and maybe he could somehow draw another unit with at least three attack or two attack if the armory uh, stayed up. And I could use a movement boost to kind of kill the Rat King before he could get the Mystic Journey off because I knew as soon as that Mystic Journey came off, I was going to be in a load of trouble. But I just could not reach the Rat King in time. So when the Rat King pushed forward to hit Castle, I knew he was going to play the Mystic Journey. And, and he did. And it put me in a tight spot where I just couldn't get anything going. Yeah, that's not something you ever want to have to deal with. The, uh, I mean, as I've reiterated basically every single episode, um, the most powerful combo in the game, in my opinion right now, would be the uh, Rat King Mystic Journey Temple. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. It's so good. For, such, for so little of coins, you get so much value out of it, and you can really dictate the, uh, the opponent's move and pretty much solidify yourself commanding the board for however long you want to command it because he has to spend a lot of his gold and his maybe one or two next turns clearing up all the rats where you can just spend your next two turns either building up your defenses or keep on the onslaught so it's it's really a game changer yoda at what point did you decide to keep that rat king alive instead of uh trading into that first dwarf did you have a second mystic in hand 
No, I pulled a blacksmith. And I just said, um, I'll, I'll wait because if I do get it, I want to be able to um, make, a, make a couple better trades the next turn. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm going to wait. Grudge Bear really scared me. That's really what it was. I didn't want to push mm-hmm. him because of Grudge Bear. I already had some rats in there. I didn't want to bring them back. So I just like wanted to spread my rats out a little bit, but I just knew that um, Rat King would have been a little bit too much, and he would have found a way to just probably clear out like four rats with one swipe. So I was just like, ah, Blacksmith, maybe whatever he puts up front, he can, you know, at least make Rat King make a better trade right there. You know, still have somebody in front of face in case uh, things go south you know for sure overall though a quick game two to say nonetheless i mean god damn i was i was out here saying match number three in the last segment and god damn <laughs> <laughs> well good game tweaking you know, sorry it's just kind of like some bad matches really no you're good you're good i have to I have to deal with the rats just like everyone else it's a it's a hard <laughs> the rat howl is, yeah. is a bitch and a half, man. Let me tell you. Yeah, it is. It, it really is. I mean, like you said, <laughs> rat stick is just like another form of the rat howl itself. In I a think, way, yeah. I mean, rats all day. I think before I go, though, um, again, Yoda, you're, you've secured your undefeated streak. Uh, any thoughts on remaining undefeated here in Casting Conflicts? Uh, I'm feeling good right now, man. I, I'm, I'm feeling good, you know. Uh, what can I say? I uh, haven't lost in the conflicts. Uh, I think I'm currently for another few days until uh, Oziek decides to place uh, about 25 more decks. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, um, with that being said, and, guys... Uh, I think... I'll be waiting on Oziek whenever he's ready to. Oh damn! Oh, we're getting we're getting people called out here. Well, with that being let said, let me just let me just step back. <laughs> let me just step back here. <laughs> uh, let's throw it out to my future self to end off this video. God damn! So much shade. All right, folks. That being said, hope you did enjoy today's uh, dual upload. Uh, if you again are watching the same day, or if you know, uh, if you haven't. Uh, you know, watch these back to back. Then just I hope you enjoy the video as well. And that's always a good thing. Let us know down in the comment section how you guys felt uh, about today's matchups. Uh, again, uh, you know, comment section down below. And yeah, with that being said, uh, while you're down there, if you haven't done so already, be sure to like if you enjoyed, share, friends, of course, subscribe if you're new or haven't done so. It's the best way to support us here on the channel. And yeah, until next time, guys, stay gaming.